this video, we are talking purchasing workflows. Uh, my name is Susan DeLoyer. I have eight years of experience in the intact space um, and I've done over 60 implementations. So let's talk purchasing. Uh, when we are in intact, we have two options. We have accounts payable and we have purchasing. Accounts payable gives us the standard option of posting to GL accounts, uh, being very rigid, uh, having limited approval workflow options. So oftentimes I will suggest to clients that we use a purchasing workflow. It can allow us to achieve um, specificity. It allows us to achieve, achieve multiple uh, workflows and approval processes. So let's dive in there. So everything in purchasing starts with the transaction definition. And here we can see the workflows that are built into this environment. This is a simple workflow um, that has been provided. The first workflow believes that every process begins with a purchase requisition. The second workflow is um, typically GNA expenses. Um, I find that it is a best practice that if you're using purchasing to put all of your transactions through purchasing to limit confusion among staff about whether it should be entered in AP or purchasing. Um, so this we're going to dump into the purchase requisition first. Um, we're going to we're going to post some transactions and see this in action. Um, one of the things that's happening in this workflow, though, is that on the purchase order, uh, we have turned on something called a commitment book. And what that does is it allows us to track committed expenses that are in the purchase order phase and not yet an invoice. So when it gets to an invoice, it will hit accounts payable and it'll hit our accrual book. But the committed expenses is in something we call a user defined book. That user defined book is outside of the accrual book and it gives us opportunities to um, segregate or combine that data with the accrual book um, in order to get a full picture. So in the CRE space, when we have construction projects, we don't want to exceed our budget. So we need to know the total value of everything that's on order as well as what has already been invoiced. So let's go ahead and create the transaction. So our purchase, no, nope, our purchase requisition is going to be our first step. We're going to hit add. We are going to put this into next month so that the data is clean. And then we're just going to pick a vendor. So down here, we're going to pick an item. I just created materials. We have a quantity. We have price. And it calculates the extended price. And then the only other thing I have to enter is the test company and we can post that. So the purchase requisition has no posting effect. Typically I will put a purchasing approval workflow on this and we'll see that in, in action here in a minute. Um, but we will go ahead and uh, convert this to a purchase order. And I will again make that July 1st. And then I'm not changing anything here, but I could partially convert this. I could only do 300 if I wanted to, but I'm going to post all of it. And actually, before I post that, I am going to pull a general ledger report. So right now, the general ledger for 7-1, it is showing no values. So anything in blue would be a value, so we don't have a value. So I'm going to go back to my screen here. We're going to post this. We're going to go back to the general ledger, run that port again. Again, we have no value because it's not in our accrual book. So we're going to customize this and we are going to combine it with our committed expense book and view. And so now we can see that we have a posting to our committed expenses payable because we don't want to put that in accounts payable. We want to be able to understand the difference between the values we're looking at. So it goes in this committed expenses payable and then down here at the bottom it is hitting our expenses. So if we had accounts payable transactions and we had committed expenses, we could see those in total and then we could also give ourselves like a job to date report that would allow us to get those total values of everything we're committed and compare it to our budget figures. So now let's convert that to a vendor invoice. 
So the vendor invoice has got two behaviors going on in the background. Once we post this transaction, it needs to hit the accrual book, but we need to back it out of the committed expenses because we don't want to overstate what's in that book because then we're not getting great job to date numbers. So this is going to do both those entries, back it out of that user defined book, put it into our accrual book. So we're going to again do this for 7-1. We have to give it a document number. And then we're going to post. So if we go back to that report and hit view. We will see now we have an entry in accounts payable. We have. Three entries here, so that was the original. I must have skipped the committed expense, but it backed it out of the committed book, which is the CEJ, and I put it into our AP book. Um, and the committed expense payable. Looks like my posting effect is off, so I I will fix that, but it will back that off. So if we actually customize this, take it out of this reporting book and view. Um, we don't want the committed expense. There we go. So we're going to view. And now we have just AP and just the expense. So it's a really easy way for us to follow that data trail, get complete pictures on the expenses that are, you know, traveling through the system um, and get a lot better reporting. So now I'm going to go add that purchasing approval workflow. So we're going to say on our, whoops, on our purchase requisition. We are going to have a named approver, which I'm just going to make myself. Um, there are many rule sets here. You know, I'm not going to cover them in this video, but there are many ways to structure approvals. And if you have a situation where purchase requisitions need to go to a project manager, but unapproved invoices or GNA expenses need to go to um, a finance team or somebody else, you know, that's a reason to have different transaction definitions as well as to uh, have different approval workflows. So we will make that and save. And if I was to add another purchase requisition, it would then come to me for approval. If I am the one entering the purchase requisition, it auto approves. So if we don't want people who, um, who are entering requisitions to be approvers, um, you just make sure that, that they don't have access to enter those requisitions. So, and that is purchasing uh, workflows. So reach out if you have questions. Thank you.